All right, thank you all for being here. Happy Thanksgiving. Um, good win on Senior Day. Uh, very emotional day. Um, I know a couple of you all brought it up after the game. Um, thought that was uh, a really touching tribute that our, uh, for Corey McCullers. Um, grateful to his family for coming back, and and that was something that was really important to our players and and tough for their family. But I thought it was uh, it was very fitting. And, but it was an emotional day, and um, it wasn't pretty, but we found a way to win. And, and at, at the end of the day, it's all that matters. You know, I talked about it after the Georgia Southern game. We're in survive and advance mode, and we survived in advance. And I'll recap that game, and then we'll move on to, to what you all want to talk about, um, uh, the game coming up this week. Uh, special teams, I'm going to get the, the highs and the lows. Special teams, we had three penalties um, in the game, which we can't do. Uh, we missed a great opportunity to block a punt early in the in the first quarter that really would have changed the whole the whole direction of the game. The positives are um, our kickoff return was much improved. We worked on it a bunch last week. We had we had two returns, average 31 yards per. Um, our kickoff coverage has improved since we had a, a, a poor game a few weeks back. Uh, Bratcher has done a nice job for us all year, with the exception of one game. Thought he kicked the ball really well. And then our punt team continues to perform. We had to use them more than we want to. Um, I think we punted nine times, but they continue to perform at a high level, one of the top units in the country. And then Tyler Sumter, you know, making four field goals. Our protection was really good. So uh, defensively, uh, very few negatives. What, what we 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 missed a few tackles uh, on Texas State's running back, more tackles than we've than we've missed during this stretch of. of of games where we've played really well, and going, we've re and we've really played defensively at a high level going back from the second half um, of the South Alabama game through Lafayette, through Georgia Southern, all the way through the Texas State game, um, and then we allowed five explosive plays. Um, the positives are held them to 280 yards, seven points, 3.6 yards per rush, and then we had uh, created six takeaways. So really, I thought it was a big time performance, a performance that was needed uh, with the struggles on offense. And and um, then finally, offensively, uh, the negatives were every possible statistic you look at. That's what was negative in the game. Uh, you know, and, and what it came down to is we just didn't win any one-on-ones and, and our attention detail was not very good. Uh, the positives are, and the reason that we are able to play that poorly and still win uh, is we had zero turnovers. Uh, we had two, only two offensive penalties. And in the second half, controlled the clock and, and got first downs. Didn't score touchdowns, but we got some first downs. And uh, so we held the ball for almost 20, 20 minutes or a little over 20 minutes in the second half. And, and then being able to run out the clock where they didn't have an opportunity to score at the end of the game was huge. Um, with that, wrapping up that game, I'll talk about our players of the week. Uh, defensively, uh, two interceptions, a forced fumble, seven seven tackles overall. Sedarius so Rooker um, played played at a high level, very productive on senior day. Uh, Tyler Sumter, third consecutive week. He's the special teams player of the week in our conference. Uh, made four field goals and really um, outside of one punt, really punted the ball well. We didn't do a very good job. He should have had probably three punts inside the ten. He had one, uh, two other ones. We got to do a better job of, of getting the ball downed. Uh, our offensive lineman of the week was J.O. Gaston, graded out at 90%, had, was almost double the production points of everybody else. Uh, probably the only guy um, that, that played up to his, his capabilities up front. Um, and then offensively, uh, B.J. Smith had 97 yards rushing. And so he uh, probably won in one of his better games, but um, – of all the skill people, he's he's a guy that stuck out, and he's had a good year, went over a thousand yards. So happy for him. Our scout team players of the week on defense was Craig Slocum, um, guy that's uh, a redshirt freshman, plays some of the special teams for us, and he's going to be a factor for us down the road defensively. Uh, our special teams uh, scout team player of the week was Patrick Richardson. He's been named several times. I think he's going to be a guy that's going to be a good player here. And then offensively, the scout team was probably one of the best teammates we have on our team in Trey Coriel. Uh, Corey McCullers Spirit Award goes to a guy that's red shirt and who's going to going to be a big time player for us. We need him to be ready to go for us next year, and that's wide receiver Demontres Brown. And then our service award goes to a freshman that's being productive for us right now, and that's Will Cholo. So. Um, with that, we'll move on and, and kind of turn the page to, to App. And uh, it's a big game. You know, big game. We traveled to Boone and to take on App State, a lot at stake. Um, winner wins the East. 
winner, uh, hosts the first ever conference championship game. Uh, our guys are exci excited about the oppor uh, opportunity. You know, and I think a lot of credit got, needs to go to our staff and our players. You know, to get to this point in the season with the, the amount of injuries we've had, I think it speaks to uh, our staff's ability to get our guys ready to play. I think it speaks to our um, – the depth that we've re we've recruited, and also just our, the willpower of our players. You know, to sit here nine and two, uh, going into the last week of the season with an opportunity to win our division and host the championship game, um, I think it's a big deal. Um, and App State, they, I think if watching them, you know, kind of kept with them all year. I think they're playing their best football uh, ever since the quarterback came back. They've played they played their best football of the year. Uh, a lot of respect for for what Satterfield and his entire staff has done building that program. And and it's not they're not they just don't have a good team this year. They've had a good program, uh, one of the top programs uh, in in our league now for the last four years. So, just a quick preview. Offensively, they're really balanced. Uh, I think it starts with their quarterback, Zach Thomas, uh, who's, who's from here in Alabama. I think it's very similar to Caleb. Uh, runs, run, they're both fast guys, uh, accurate passer. He, he's, he has the ability to, when the play breaks down, to scramble. Um, and he's, he's, he's played at a high level. It's a, he's a, making his first – I mean, this is his first year as a starting quarterback, and he's been really productive. Uh, their running back is, is a kid named Evans. Um, and he's extremely fast. I mean, a guy that if you, if he sees a seam, can hit it and take it the distance. He's had a lot of explosive runs. Their their wide receiver, uh, the group of wide receivers is deep. Uh, I think they're led by the Sutton kid, number two, uh, big, strong, uh, fast guy, uh, as talented as anybody in our league. And they and they play multiple tight ends, and their offensive line is really physical. They do a good job running the football. Everything's based off them having success in the run and being able to hit some shot plays over the head. But but a really good offense team. Defensively, they have one that they have. I think they're ranked either one or two in almost every defense category in our league. I think they're in the top ten of several defense categories nationally. Um, and they're, they're, they're fast, they move well, the scheme's really good, um, they have the ability to cover out wide, um, they're, they're good. You know, when you see those numbers, you turn on the film, it matches. You know, there's a reason why they have those numbers. And on special teams, they're, they're up there, uh, one of the top teams, special teams efficiencies. Uh, they have great operation times, I think that's, sometimes that goes without being said, but their snapper, and it does a great job. Uh, the Evans, their starting running back, is one of the top kickoff returners in the country. He's had multiple touchdowns over the last two years. And then uh, the Duck Kid, one of the top corners in, in, in all of college football, is their punt returner. And he has the ability to take it to the house as well. And on top of that, they've blocked a bunch of punts. And uh, they think they've blocked four punts and, and at least two field goals on the year. So we're going to have our hands full, you know. Uh, you know, I saw where we opened up as 10.5-point underdogs. I think that's fair. Uh, we're kind of limping in here off of not a very good performance, and they're playing their best football of the year. So um, our guys are excited about it. We've got to have a great week of preparation and and make the trip to Boone with, with a lot at stake. So with that, questions. Have you seen any difference in offensive approach from them with Evans as opposed to when Jalen Moore got hurt? No, they, you know, they, they just kind of do what they do. Um, and they have just kind of run it back for them. They had the the, the, uh, the kid before Cox, and then Cox came in, and then, then it was Jalen Moore, and now it's the Evans kid. And they kind of – they're going to do what they do. Even when Zach Thomas was out at quarterback they, and they played a couple other guys for the two-week stretch he was out, they still did the same – deal and uh, Satterfield calls the plays I think he does a really good job he's a talented play caller um, and they do they're, they're a little bit different than they have been in years past and I think some of that has to do with just the number you know the talent and the numbers they have at wide out um, but the Evans kid is different than Moore okay Moore was man just a really physical kid that broke a ton of tackles uh, Evans is 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 physically um He's a, a a bigger kid, like a, a longer kid, uh, and extremely fast. Still breaks tackles, um, but he he's uh, he can take it the distance, Barry, at any point. And you you see him; he's got a large number of explosive runs this year. You mentioned limping into this game. Can you update some injuries? Uh, I know some mm -hmm. guys went down uh, Saturday. Yeah, we play with we play without most of them on Saturday. Um, so. We'll know we'll know more uh, about Damian Willis's availability uh, as we move through the week. 
Uh, I think he's probably questionable. Uh, DeAndre Douglas uh, re got re-injured. We tried to play him a little bit. He wanted to play on senior day. He 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 didn't play. He he was a shell of himself. Um, and and kind of re you know re-injured his uh, foot a little bit. So we'll kind of see. I would say he's doubtful. Uh, Sidney Davis uh, had an ankle injury in the game. Uh, we'll see how he feels today. Um, and then Kirk Kelly, who missed the game, who's probably been our our uh, most productive offensive lineman this year. We'll we'll know more about him as we move through um, as we move through the week. Coach, your defense the offense wasn't great on Saturday. Your defense was playing great. Mm -hmm. Lace Brown, do you think he's at his best football now? He kind of was in an injury earlier in the season. Yeah, I think he's hitting his stride. I think he's getting a lot more confidence in his knee. Um, he's running better, um, and you know he's really played for for three weeks in a row. Really since the South game, he's playing a lot more discipline with his eyes. He's playing with better technique. Um, he, he's playing the most physical he's played in any time during his career. Um, he's back being a factor for us on special teams. So I do think he, he is progressing and, and, and really starting to play his best ball. And I think it all comes from just confidence. You know, I think, he, I think he's, he's been without the knee brace now, I think, for six games. And he's improved each week without that. Th without that. Can we read anything into the statistics that the two best defensive teams and almost every team defensive category are the two Sun Belt teams with the best records? Is, is there a coincidence there at all? I, I mean, I think it's correlated. You know, I think it, if you probably, if you went and looked at most of the leagues, that's the way it is, you know. And I just think that, you know, offensively, there's so many things that can go, then go awry, you know, really. I mean, in – Offensively, through a 12-game season, you're going to have some ups and downs. And the teams that consistently play well in defense, and it, and, it, and, it break, and it comes down to getting off blocks and making tackles. I mean, it really does. And the teams that can get off blocks and make tackles um, are, are teams that consistently give themselves a chance to win. And that's what we, we've been able to do now for three years. That's what App's done for four years now is, is really play defense at a high level um, and had some really good skill players. And, and, and we do and they do. They've had some really good skilled players. They're able to score touchdowns. But I think the, the foundation of the success has been in playing defense at a high level. Marcus was on offense last mm -hmm. week. What is his plan? Yeah, he, we're gonna, we're gonna, he'll, he'll go back and play defense this week. We'll use him maybe a little bit on offense. Um, we, we had him on a snap count last week. And we felt like we could control a little bit more on offense. And none of those guys that played on Saturday practiced all week. So, so on offense, we were pretty – just we needed some guys just to run around to be able to practice. And so, um, really wanted to get him anywhere from six to ten touches in the game. We got him two. Um, and so, we'll, we'll have some packages for him offensively, but he's going to go back and he'll play defense this week. You mentioned after the game Saturday that you would discuss a little more on Monday uh, the fact that this game won't determine this season. Yeah. No, matter, it, no matter what, this season is a success. Can you elaborate? Yeah, I just think that, you know, here we are, we're 7-0 in the conference. I think what everybody, you know, anytime you play these type of games, I think it goes into this is going to – this are, these, these type of games make or break your season. I just don't buy into that, you know. Um, we're playing a really good football team. And we're going on the road to play that. If we all know what the if, if we win the game, we host the first ever conference championship game, and we'll be favored right here on our on our home field if we win the game. Um, but to say hey, to put all our eggs in one basket and say, you know, this, this the year hadn't been successful, we don't win. I don't agree with that. Um, I think from what our what our staff and what our what our players and more importantly our players have been able to do through all these injuries that we've occurred that we've we've had this year. Um, I think we're sitting here nine and two, and by, by any ways that I judge, I think it's been a successful year. Now, we have a chance to make it a special season if we go on the if we're able to go on the road and beat App, and then host the conference ship, conference championship game. I think that makes it a special year. But this this year to this point has been successful. B.J. Smith uh -huh. playing incredible this season. What's the confidence level of his teammates to him coming into? Question one of his biggest games of his career. Well, they they have a ton of confidence in him just for the sole purpose that he, he's a lunch pill guy. He comes to work. He's he's been playing banged up probably for the last month of the season, 
Um, we don't have a ton of depth at that at that position, and he's probably had to take more more carries than than we'd like for him to. Um, but he's tough. He's physical. Uh, shows up every day with a great attitude. So our staff and our players have have a lot of confidence in BJ. Okay. Okay. No problem. Um, I would just want to know with the holiday and with, mm -hmm. with the classes out, um, especially with the holiday on Thursday. What, what's the how will you yeah? So so our, our week. What we've done. This is one of my favorite weeks of, of really the entire season, just because um, we got a lot of time with our players, you know, and and so we t we talk about hey, if you want to be an NFL player, this is this gives you a taste of it because you're basically a full time football player. And, and that's not entirely true because um, what we do is we basically we break up the day. Uh, so um, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday they have uh, lifting, study hall, and community service in the morning. We practice in the afternoon, try to go earlier. That way we're in the daylight the whole time. Um, and then Thursday we'll practice in the morning, and then we'll do a we'll do a Thanksgiving lunch uh, for all the players, all the staff, families. Uh, all the players' families are invited back. Um, and then we'll give them off Thursday evening for some of the local guys that want to go home. And then we'll come back, practice Friday morning, and fly, fly to Boone. All right, thank you all.